Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen, and this week joining me are Andy Parsons, Sean Walsh, and Greg Davies, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis, and Milton Jones. And we start with headliners. Here's a recent picture of FIFA President <laughs> Sepp Blatter. But what does BSIP stand for? Is it uh, bean sprouts in package? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, Blatter steals idiot's pizza? <laughs> is it, uh, bullshitter is president? Mm. Is it, is it, <laughs> Beckham's, Beckham's spelling is funny? <laughs> yeah. Does he actually have that pronounced a lisp, does he? No, he doesn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> is there a new, uh, cough medicine that Beckham's launching? It's called Bexip. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens to the advert? It goes for, you know, at the end of the day, if you've got the flu, then, you know, you take Bexip, and at the end of the day, you take one in the morning, and then once at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say, he's got a bit of a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that Beckham thinks there's something is wrong, because if you look at the picture, he's going, I. There's an A coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Biscuit selection impresses president, is it? <laughs> I can't get away from the fact that Set Platter sounds like Set Platter. <laughs> and actually, what it actually sounds like is it sounds like a German man saying step ladder. Yes, who got that building is on fire, I'll get a set platter. <laughs> Is it quite a small building? Yeah, <laughs> firemen have a step ladder. Oh, well, yeah. turns out this was the wrong thing to bring to the World Trade Centre. It's considerably <laughs> higher than we'd imagined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyone looking for the correct answer? Latter stays in power. Yeah. That's very good. Well done, Chris. That's it. <laughs> yes. The answer I was looking for was Blatter stays in power. This is the news that Switzerland's Sepp Blatter has retained the presidency of FIFA following an election in which he was the only candidate. The election went ahead despite <laughs> calls from the English Football Association to postpone it following months of controversy for FIFA in uh, relation to allegations of corruption and bribery. This, by the way, is the ballot slip that was used in the election. <laughs> That's that a mock-up from the no, sun or that's something? genuinely... That was done over somebody's shoulder, yeah. It looks weirdly like Facebook. <laughs> Dislike. <Yeah. laughs> or indeed would people go, I've never heard of Joseph. Who's Joseph? I've heard of Sepp. Uh, he's yeah. a friend of mine. And was Joseph the German the candidate going, well, I was voting for Step Ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was that name is very high as a bit of paper. I may need a Sepp Blatter. <laughs> yep. Are you going to keep going back to that well again, are you? <laughs> <laughs> They will at various points during the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who backed, uh, who backed England's call to postpone the election? Prince England. William. Prince, Prince William did, yes. Prince William was there. He was basically saying, wasn't he, they thought that basically they should postpone the election. And you're thinking, they've got somebody who's a member of a family that have basically run <laughs> this country for centuries <laughs> by a divine right telling other people about proper democratic accountability. <laughs> <laughs> After that lovely wedding, how <laughs> dare you turn on them after that but delightful morning that they got? Who was our delegation? It was Beckham, Prince William and Cameron. They are all loaded. Surely they could have just done what every other country did and put their hand in the pocket <laughs> and got us the World Cup. <laughs> I don't know what Prince William was supposed to... I think it was supposed to impress people. We have brought well, Prince William. How is that going to impress me from, like, Qatar? I am Prince William. Oh, I am also a prince. And so is my brother and my dog. And <laughs> 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 we're all princes here, you know. The, uh, the FA are talking about withdrawing from FIFA, but that would mean they would just be called Fee. <laughs> every time they announced a meeting, they would think that a big giant was coming. <laughs> It's very difficult to tell, though, whether it is bribery or not, I think. You don't quite know in organisations like that, but what Sepp Blatter said when he was accused of it and when he was making that speech in Geneva, he said, he said, our pyramid is shaking and our ship is taking on water. And you think, they've got a pyramid and a ship. Where did they come from? <laughs> <laughs> did the Egyptian delegate go, shut up about <laughs> the pyramids? <laughs> 
the, the other reason I haven't been worried too much about the news coverage, apart from the fact that Step Ladder sounds like Step Ladder, <laughs> is because during the, during the coverage, they kept on going in about the Qatari representative, Bin Haman. And every time I heard that, I thought, well, a bit of Ben Lin will sort that out. <laughs> Yeah, every time idea. I said that to myself. Did you? <laughs> yeah. The whole idea of Oh, the medicine is in a high cabinet. <laughs> I would have to get it. <laughs> a set letter. <laughs> I already think the Qataris sound like something out of Doctor Who anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the Qatari. <laughs> I, we are part of Warrior Nation. Uh, <laughs> he uh, suggested that they now need an ethics committee. And he's appointed to the ethics committee Henry Kissinger, an 88-year-old <laughs> war criminal. That's who, you, that's who you want on an ethics committee. Who else has he got in mind? Abu Hamza, <laughs> the child catcher off Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, <laughs> and the producers of Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. <laughs> So why did they want Kim Bassinger to be in FIFA? <laughs> I still can't work out. Can you say that Kim Bassinger is going to be head of FIFA? Is that yeah, what you're saying? That's exactly what I said. I said Kim Bassinger is going to be head of FIFA. <laughs> exactly. So just after I said you need to get a haircut, it's right in front of your ears. <laughs> <laughs> also, you don't want the World Cup in the Middle East, because if any match goes to sudden death, well, that's just tempting. <laughs> What could the Liberal Democrats lose at the next general election? Well, up to a quarter of their seats. Yes, apparently. up to a quarter. How would they lose a quarter? This is apart from the 75% of their seats that they're going to lose anyway, oh, due to their massive unpopularity. <laughs> but the other quarter, how are they going to lose it? Boundary changes. Is that not right? Boundary changes. Like you're selling <laughs> it to me. Yeah. Boundary changes. More boundary changes you can possibly imagine. Yeah. 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 Boundary changes, moonlight, good times and boogie. <laughs> <laughs> how are they going to decide which... 50 MPs to get rid of. Laser quest. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> or release a lion into the House of Commons, <laughs> and wait till it's had enough, and hope it doesn't go for Eric Pickles first. <laughs> then there'll only be 640 and I couldn't eat another MP. <laughs> I'm absolute. Does anybody want this leg? <laughs> Labour have said it's going to lead to basically more safe Tory seats. Right. And of course, not as much as. You know, there are safe Tory seats now because of the way the Lib Dems are going. Nothing could get worse for Nick Clegg at the moment. His reputation could go no further. If he'd got his knob out at the royal wedding, <laughs> his popularity would only have increased. <laughs> <laughs> I think he... only, I... only if he found out that his charming Spanish wife sold salad would his popularity <laughs> have been any lower... <laughs> I think if two Labour MPs uh, uh, find themselves against each other, they should combine, like the Transformers, to make one super MP and destroy <laughs> all of the Liberals forever. Yeah. <laughs> There's something in that plan. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's slightly more working out than that. Uh, it's the, the one-year anniversary of the coalition yes. at this point. I bet David forgot. I bet Nick was ringing up going, so, so where are you taking me? <laughs> We know where he's taking you, <laughs> and how roughly. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Cameron is constantly going on about the strength of the, strength of the union and how strong they are. I think he should be, they should be made to kiss in public. <laughs> That's what we used to do at primary school. If people said they liked each other, we made them kiss. Was this a, a, during your career as a pupil? <laughs> no, or during no, your later <laughs> career as it, a teacher? It was a uh, prison. <laughs> <laughs> It was a prison school, I was that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the, the points go to Chris Ewan Milton. <laughs> now we play a round called There's No Super Injunction on Our Ryan Gags. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Greg, Milton, and Sean, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launch the wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner, whoever I think, is the funniest. Okay, here we go. The first subject is. Trust. Who wants to come in on that? Sean. I get, I get, I get, proud. I get guilty when I'm with a friend and he loses money. In his house. This happened to me recently. My friend lost a fiver. I thought, does, does he think? 
Does he think I've taken his fiver? Is this what's happening? He, he thinks I've taken... I want to say I haven't taken his fiver, but I don't want him to, to think that I'm guilty. And then I start thinking, hang on, have I taken his fiver? Maybe I've taken his fiver. <laughs> Maybe I've put his fiver in my pocket. I want to check my pocket. I can't check my pocket. If he sees me checking my pocket, he's going to think I've nicked his fiver. I want to go and hide and check my pocket. I can't hide and check my pocket. If I hide and check my pocket, he's definitely going to think I've nicked his fiver. <laughs> so I went into the bathroom. I found his fiver. I couldn't go and give it to him. It would have looked like I got guilty and decided to give it back. I can't just leave it there. He's seen me go in, it's going to look like I planted it. So I just <laughs> nicked it. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. Subject is family. Who wants to come in on that? Greg. All of my family are obsessed by uh, the ageing process. Every single generation of us are obsessed by it at the moment. I'll just share this with you before I uh, talk about other family members, just so I can get it off my chest. I was visiting my parents last week, and an old family friend came up, as, up to us in the street and said to my mum, Hello, Pauline, how are you? And she said, I'm all right, thanks, Kath, how are you? And then she looked up at me and she said, Hello, Bob, how are you? <laughs> Bob is my dad. <laughs> He is 75 years of age. <laughs> All of us are obsessed with it. All of us are obsessed with ageing in our family. Even my nan. My nan is doing her best to hold off the years. She puts her pound of face cream on every single morning. You know, and there's not a face cream on the market that works, ladies and gentlemen. I know that because of my nan, because she's a lovely woman, but she's religiously applied this stuff, and with the best will in the world, her face is ruined. <laughs> I said to her, you've spent all that time and all that money, Gran, and your face is no better than Grandad's. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> he died in the war. <laughs> he got shot in the face. <laughs> With a cannon. <laughs> OK. That, uh... That leaves you with Milton. Let's see what you've been effort to spin the wheel. And the subject is travel. <laughs> when I was young, my mum used to put food on a spoon and say, there's a train coming, there's a train coming, there's a train coming. We'd always eat it, because we knew that if we didn't, she wouldn't untie us from the railway line. <laughs> I tried to get here by train today. I said, today there's a bus replacement service. So I gave them a tin of pineapple chunks. <laughs> I said, what's that? I said, that's my money replacement service. <laughs> I didn't have any money because her friend nicked my fiver. <laughs> Thanks, that doesn't normally work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I managed to borrow a car and I parked it up in uh, Bus Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Last year I went on a ballooning holiday, put on four stone. The other day I bought one of those off-road vehicles. 3,000 quid, got it home, found out it was a canoe. <laughs> Give it up round, the points go to Milton Jones! Come on, Mark. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Sean, which category would you like? Can I go for sports? OK, sport it is. The answer is 500 million. What is the question? Is it the amount of times that Ryan Giggs has got home late and said, ah, oh, extra football training? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many doors do a Jehovah's Witness have to knock on before someone lets them in? <laughs> is it how many times does Cheryl Cole have to repeat <clears throat> a sentence before the American public <laughs> will understand? <laughs> is it... How many tiny farmers with their tiny ploughs does it take to make a field of corduroy? <laughs> Is it how many times Wayne Rooney would have to play a monkey at Connect Four before he won? <laughs> <laughs> How many 
many lines would you get if you shagged the headmaster's wife? Mm. <laughs> Is it if you took the entrails from every adult in the United Kingdom and laid them all out end to end, how many years in prison would you get? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many times do we have to bomb Gaddafi's house before NATO admit that we're actually trying to kill him? <laughs> Is it how many bumps will Stonehenge get on its next birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many miles I would run to punch Justin Bieber in the face? <laughs> Is it what rhymes with Schmive hundred million? <laughs> okay, if that's what we're doing, then can I have the correct answer, please? <laughs> That's the end of the round, though. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely a sign of either the end of the round or the end of days. Uh, <laughs> is it the amount of money they're hoping to earn from selling Olympic tickets? That's, that's close enough. That's oh. absolutely fine. Well done, Annie Park. Thank you. Yes, the question I was looking for was how much does the organising committee of the London Olympics hope to raise from ticket sales for next year's Games? This follows from the revelation that 900,000 people missed out on Olympic tickets in the recent application process. There were 20 million requests for 6.6 .6 million seats. Who has got tickets? Mate. Uh, you've got tickets? Yeah. yeah. Hang on, we've all, have you got none tickets? I've got very little and I'm furious. It was a farce, wasn't it? No, no. They, basi they basically said, oh, we'll take money out of your account and we'll tell you in three weeks' time what you may or may not have got. It's like being organised by the Bank of Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you have won tickets for the Olympics. Just fax 2,000 quid to this <laughs> random number. <laughs> and then collect your 400 tickets for the volleyball qualifiers. <laughs> My wife wanted to go and see uh, the shooting. I'm not paying 80 quid to see shooting in East London. You can see that for free. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think anybody who hasn't got tickets, don't worry too much. Let's face it, the general feeling is, is that the transport system will still be mucked. There'll be massive queues to get in. Yeah. It'll be a five or a pint. The burgers will be half cooked. You'll have people with fat thighs sat either side of you <laughs> and a really tall bloke in front of you with a kid with ADHD. <laughs> To be, fair, that, to be fair, that's what they're selling, an experience you will never forget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky I'm going to the swimming baths to see the 400-metre butterfly, and I can't wait to see an insect that big. <laughs> well, OK, which famous Londoner missed out on tickets to the Games? Jack the Ripper. Yes. <laughs> No, another one, another one, another more famous London than that. Dick Van Dyke. Not Dick Van Dyke, <laughs> no. I can't be... believe it! Oh, oh. down from London, man! Oh, oh blimey, Mary! <laughs> Which Londoner famously missed out on tickets? Boris out... Johnson yeah, didn't Boris get yes. any tickets. And he's obviously not very confident, is he? <laughs> <laughs> That's Boris Johnson is about to do a knife attack. <laughs> Did you see John Prescott's uh, offer? to the people who no. didn't manage to get tickets, John Prescott put a tweet out saying, if you've missed out on uh, tickets to the Olympic Games, the, uh, the East Hull Olympic Games start today in the park near my, in my constituency, which is kind of like saying, can't afford the opera? Well, there's a tramp at the bottom of my road. <laughs> yes, he whistles my way. <laughs> Greg, why are you following John Prescott on Twitter? <laughs> Private reasons. <laughs> Let me ask you, Olympic, what, what is the first taste of Olympic fever that we're going to get? We are basically going to have the Olympic flame. Yes, we are. Which is apparently going to go round the country, including six of our islands, including Guernsey, Jersey and the Orkneys. And that's, of course, if when it goes to the Orkneys, they don't keep whoever takes it there <laughs> and worship them as a god. <laughs> It's some former, former Olympic athletes are going to be taking the torch round. Well, you know that all round the country, street cleaners along the route are going, please not Paula Radcliffe, please yeah. not Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> I go to East London quite a lot. When it gets to East London, it's just going to be stopped every five seconds with people just going, excuse me, I couldn't buy your light, could I? <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? What are the police, what are the, what's being offered to the police who are guarding the Olympic torch on this 8,000 mile journey? Counselling. Counselling. Counselling to help them get back into the proper world at the end of it. 
And they'll have been Well, they're actually, they need counselling before they start if you're going to run for 70 days behind a flame. <laughs> 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 you find to have some sort of, like, moth syndrome if they've been running behind a flame for the last 70 days. They're just constantly <laughs> jumping at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> God say, don't put him on the night shift again. It was a disaster last time. <laughs> Jumping over walls to get to people's barbecues and just stand staring at it. <laughs> I worship the flame now. <laughs> the flame is my god now. <laughs> Moving on. <It's... laughs> what did Wayne Rooney admit on Twitter this week? He has admitted to having a hair transplant. Yes, he has, yes. Because he said he was being teased by his teammates. And you're thinking, his teammates call him Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> that has got very little to do with his hair <laughs> and a lot to do with his ears and his nose and his face. <laughs> is he going to have them transplanted as well? I mean, the best thing you can hope for is still being teased by his teammates, but being called Hairy Shrek. <laughs> He, he, tweeted, uh, he tweeted, it's still a bit bruised and swollen. When it dies down, you'll be the first to see it. But apparently he was just retweeting Ryan Giggs. <laughs> <laughs> Is it standard when you have a hair transplant to have a zip put on the front? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's, what that, that, what's that zip for? What's it keep his pyjamas in. Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, it's time for bed, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> My, my uncle had a hair transplant and he just got great big floppy ears, but he could run fast. <laughs> I wouldn't like... You've really got to trust the surgeon, haven't you? Because uh, like, he takes hair from places that you've got lots and he puts them in places where you... Yeah, I don't think it's free reign to just go anywhere at all. Uh, <laughs> from, what if he did? What well, if he did? You could end up looking like a scourer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scouser. <laughs> <laughs> a bit here, I think, let's be honest. But I was at one don't, point... Don't talk <coughs> me with you. I'm going a bit here. Uh, <laughs> what's that about? Yeah, Dara, I've like been it? putting a bit on here yeah, as well, by the way. Oh, yeah. Going a bit at the seams, Dara. Apparently, two out of three men will suffer from male pattern baldness, where, obviously, you start losing it on the top and then it starts coming out your ears. <laughs> and you're thinking, that's not much of a pattern, is it? <laughs> There's nothing worse than when the, when the barber discreetly does your ears. First time he does that. Yeah. After that, you're OK. The dignity yeah. is your take-up. But if he goes... Vroom, and just... Vroom, and just yeah. 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 But it's suddenly really loud... Vroom, and you go, what? <laughs> it's like a bee has flown into your ear just for a second. Vroom, vroom. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's never talk about it again. I had a haircut in Turkey and they set fire to my ear hair. Really? Oh, yeah, but they liked it. But not yeah. the, the entire thing. Just like they... they... No, they didn't just... <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> 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 Welcome. Thank you for coming to Crazy Omar's Barbershop. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and the point is with a Chris Hugh and Milton. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read it this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear at a school assembly. Okay, today we're going to have a special outing. So, Miss Williams, if you'd like to tell everybody why you're a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome a new member of staff today. He has no arms and no legs and no body, and we will call him the head. <laughs> Would whoever's milkshake is bringing all the boys to the yard, please stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting, boys and girls. I've just had a shit the size of a baby seal. <laughs> <laughs> if you are found in possession of cocaine, you will be given a hundred lines. No, wait. And today in the after-school club, uh, we're going to be using paper mache to make a mother that actually loves you enough to pick you up at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to say that during the summer holidays, Mr. Wang married Miss Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> His nickname will remain the same. <laughs> 
<laughs> a wise man once said, boys and girls, that if you try your hardest, you can fulfil your dreams. Generally, that's true. Not for you, though, Tom. You can't read. So... <laughs> And today, everyone, we have a new boy. Now, for some reason, whatever reason, he's been to a lot of schools. So be kind to him. Will you please make your way to the front, Richard Poo Willy? <laughs> <laughs> a word about registers. Uh, most of the staff are on one. <laughs> so that is how you put on a condom. <laughs> But, sir, shouldn't you have used a cucumber? <laughs> Not with that E. coli kicking around. <laughs> sorry, sorry I'm late. I just had a bit of a run-in with an interactive whiteboard. <laughs> it told me to fuck off. <laughs> I've had all your mums. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the next topic is... On lighter things to hear on a TV talent show. Tonight, I'm going to be climbing a sip ladder. <laughs> You're right. I can't sing. Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this song to a friend of mine who was run over last week and is in hospital. The wheels of the bus go round and round and round. And round. <laughs> I've got an ability that no one on this planet has. That's Ant, that's Deck. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Elvis was in the building. You're fat and there's a stench of death. <laughs> It's not what everyone would call entertainment, but you are one hell of an assassin. <laughs> I thought you hit the high notes really, really well. It'll be interesting to see if you can still do that when I haven't got your nuts in a clamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my double act partner? Oh, he's he's in here. <laughs> Feeling. <laughs> Nothing more than <laughs> feeling <laughs> Crying to <laughs> When you said you were going to ride a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have been on the show before. I was once trapped in somebody else's underpants going, feeling... <laughs> That was an exceptional performance, and the way that you have overcome your blindness is truly inspirational. But this is a chip shop, the X Factor audition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're all terrible, OK? All of you, you're completely dreadful. I don't know what you're doing. Especially you, Hasselhoff. What have you done since me, watch? <laughs> And as well as that, I can unzip the top of my head. It's where I keep my pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said you were a Gary Glitter tribute act, but we weren't expecting you to do that. <laughs> OK, at the end of that, the points go to Andy, Sean and Greg. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Anderson, Hugh Dennis, and Milton Jones. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Sean Walsh, and Greg Davies. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Gary Green. Good night. The secret of the missing locket is revealed. Psychoville, the final episode, later at 11.20 here on BBC Two. Over on BBC Three now, dealing with a price war. That's the comedy of Ideal.